How big will the building be? Classification, classification of building construction on building codes. Building codes channel, uh, I showed you this particular cartoon which kind of typifies the process that we go to to get the building to be the height that you need it to be, uh, for whatever reason. Have you ever noticed when you looked at old uh, New York, the city that we love, New York has a lot of these skyscrapers that are built like wedding cakes. They stack up and they draw back and they go up and then they draw back in. This is to accomplish some of the setback theories that are happening. That may not be true to the old world trade center, but it was true in the 1930s that this was one answer to particular slope issues. There are different kinds of buildings that we can make on a cityscape. We have accessory dwellings. These are called grand, grandmother houses, relative houses. This is where you put your relatives in the backyard. You give them a room so they don't have to invade your house. But it's a nice room. It's, it's got uh, kitchen and bathroom hookups. And this is how you should remodel your garage. When you get a chance, you should add value to it. Remodel the garage and make uh, a room above it. There's also single family dwellings that are highly prized, uh, duplex, triplex, and quadplex types of construction that save money, and in, but also give you the benefit of having a large area. Uh, you can do it an entire community. This one is closely packed, but they made the best use of the space they have. They were able to get these units on. You could have a bungalow, of course. You could have townhomes row homes, live work areas, and live work areas usually downtown. Uh, there's a, a brand new couple of places downtown Fort Myers, right? They're starting to put in these live work areas uh, down below. They might have services, coffee shops, bars, but above that, the people live the extreme. And then you can also have your commercial plots. Uh, this one, more like a larger factory, and then a tower on a podium. Key, key winning piece in Monopoly, the tower on a podium. And tower on a podiums are, are types of things that have uh, like the downstairs atrium, and then it might have the living units above. Here's typical Florida lots that you might see maybe out in Lehigh or North Northport uh, areas, Fort Myers. Uh, conventional lots, usually, usually we don't have too many that have alleyways. Everything kind of butts up to each other to get a certain amount of space to put our building on. And we're not allowed to build over the entire area of, even though we have this nice rectangle, we have to leave areas for nature, for drainage, for utilities. And so we carve out that space. But sometimes in development, you, can, you may actually own that development and you can get even tighter. Here, they've said that this is all community <coughs> space, but each person only has a little walkway between buildings. So, in some ways, this is more like a multifamily with separations. If you did a multifamily and you turn this into a wall, you would have almost the same condition. But here, <coughs> everyone has their independence and their privacy. Urban density locks. Different conditions. Here, here's type A buildings uh, and type B buildings, business, and then some of the smaller apartments. You can have one or two floor residentials. You have two floors shop on the outside. Uh, you can get larger structures, three floors, four to nine floors, uh, three to five floors in residential, reinforced concrete. Again, when we start getting a little bit higher, you need to investigate how you're going to protect the building uh, so it doesn't catch fire, but you can see the different kinds of solutions for housing types. We did our review of the code. We keep working that workbook, we keep hitting it so that we kind of get into that progress of how we're going to do things. We're going to look at occupancy type of construction, location of the property, floor height, height and number of stories, and we're going to look a lot of these things up in the chart. Having satisfied all that, we're still talking. Now we're kind of leading into what's the human element to the code? 
what is the zoning? What are things people are going to argue for? And then there's another component of that. What is the fire danger in proposed structure? That's the topic for tonight. <clears throat> we talked about construction types, the A for assembly, B business, education, old factory, high hazard, institutional, mercantile, residential storage, and utility miscellaneous, and then H, high hazard. Things can blow up, catch fire, and so with with high hazard, things are going to be at a minimum as far as area. Here's the example page. We looked at a couple charts, and we need to start memorizing where these things are. Like, what is table 500, 503, and here's table 601. Fire res this is to the floor. Fire resistance rating requirements for building elements. And, and typically, you can have type 1, type 2, 3, 4, and 5. We're going to mention the types. The code component, components. Building or floor area. After one knows the occupancy group and the construction type, it's important to establish the permissible area for each floor, for each use for the entire building. Some types of construction are limited in the size based on occupancy and concentration of the allowable height areas are tabulated in table 503. And there's also, I have a quizlet for, for these section numbers. <clears throat> Classifying the building. Height and number of stories determine the maximum height and number of stories permitted based on the occupancy group and the type of construction. So you can go to your 503 for And here they are. This is just a small segment. I have uh, my residentials, and I have business, so we have educational, factory, but there's more. Uh, so you read along the type of construction, and it, it will tell you how many stories and what's the area. Typical reading might be five, three stories for a type two combustible, and then the area that goes with it. This is pre. This is before you add sprinklers. This is just the basic raw without any augmentation, any change to help the fire rating, this is what you get. Anytime you increase and you add sprinklers, it's magic, okay? Because you can go, you can increase the height 20 feet, so you can get to that 90 feet that, that we saw on our little cartoon, and you can also get to a larger size. But there is a take back. The, the drawback is that sprinklers cost money. Fire prevention costs money. So you have to have that initial investment to go for it to make to make sure that you're going to get a return. Basic construction types. There's two types of construction. It either burns, combustible, or it does not burn. Non-combustible materials. Wood or burning materials. Stuff that burn wood would burn. Stuff that won't burn. Right? At least a, a conventional fire would be a concrete steel. It too can be, actually suffer and have fatigue. That's another story. Definitely about the codes. That's endurance uh, of fire damage. All buildings in the U.S. are constructed by five construction categories. There's type one, which is fire restrictive, means combustible, and type two, non-combustible. There's uh, Type 3 is ordinary. Type 4 is heavy timber, which is having a renaissance right now. It's coming back into style. And heavy timber, also here in my materials class, we're learning that heavy timber can be fabricated with, with uh, the, the new manufactured wood to make larger timber pieces. <clears throat> Type 5, wood frame, the most combustible. So you can kind of see that it goes from least combustible one to most combustible five. And that's one thing you should remember. It'll help you out. Four of the five types have subgroups. And everything in code seems to have a subgroup. And, and that's the purpose of the codes to keep looking up to further detail. Subgroup A means it's protected. All structural members have additional Fire rated coating or cover by means of sheetrock, spray on, or other metal. The additional fire 
rated coating or cover extends the fire resistance of the structural members by at least one hour. Remember, we're playing with a small range, really. Everything starts out one hour escape, but we can push it to two hours, and with fire resistance, we can get that three hour rate. You've got to get out of a building that's on fire within three hours. Okay, that's, that's what they're giving you, the person, the human, to get out of the building. Uh, so we only play with one, two, or three hours. All of our work is there. Subgroup B means it's unprotected. All structural members have no additional fire rated coating or cover. Exposed members are the only fire resistance according to the natural ability, characteristics, and fire rate. So when we're talking about this, we're, we're almost leading to the to understand this. This kind of describes a, a regular conventional home. You know, a home's to be made out of a lot of different things, so they're unprotected. So whatever the stud wall, the jip board is going to give you is what you get. So that's what they mean by unprotected. You're not doing anything additional to it. Let's talk about the most common type three. And a lot is written on type three because it's this. It's the most stock that we have out there in our older communities. Not so much in Florida, but you do see it downtown. Fort Myers, and Naples, and a few other places that are older. Uh, and, and it's something that's built is wall construction of brick or stone. It might have hollow rock brick in it. The floors and roof are combustible construction. Those rafters are unprotected. Uh, and it's just by their virtue that, that, you know, and their characteristics that they're going to be protected. So pretty <clears throat> common stuff. This is ace metal working. And type 3 construction, because it's the most common, it's also the most common that catches fire. So it's often the most common thing that the fire department goes to put out. So because of that, type 3 gets a lot of attention in fire communities. Typically, it will have two load-bearing walls, long walls and curtain walls, or the short walls. Two curtain walls, short walls, and then we see that nice construction that's holding up everything. Typical pad that we, something we would probably take a look at during our building blueprint class. We have certain char structural characteristics and hazards, type three, protected, it's an ordinary. Uh, it abides to the NFPA 5000 building and safety code. And what they would like these type 3 buildings that are protected, they should have a one hour rating. Uh, the bearing wall should have a two hour rated. Interior wall should be one hour rated. Floor construction beams and joists, one hour rated. And roof construction beams and joists, one hour rated. Structural characteristics and hazards, the unprotected stuff. Okay, so so without doing anything, our structural frame and columns have a zero hour rating. That's not to say they couldn't last an hour, it could be 40 minutes, but it's it, you can't use it in a safety, a life safety issue. Exterior bearing walls, by their very nature, are pretty heavy and you can get it to our rating. We're assuming they're gonna be stone, brick, or, or hollow block. Interior bearing walls, they're not rated. Floor construction beams and joists, they're not rated. And roof construction is not rated. So we're assuming we're going to get out of these places at a very quick rate when that fire happens. Type 3 ordinary is predominant or common construction type. It's known as brick and joist structure. And it's seen all over in Main Street, USA. Exterior loading walls are masonry, and some other structural components are combustible. Masonry walls can be brick, stone, or concrete block, terracotta block, or older, or some older buildings. Interior structure members are almost all wood. There's something we can individualize. Okay, New Orleans, one or two families, something like this with down yeah, urban, uh, older, northern. Parts. You can see it's pretty common stuff, uh, but it's going to behave in a certain way. Here's downtown Fort Myers. Uh, 
wonderful when you go down there in art walks, you get to see all the old architecture that's being won. And when you go down there, you want to visit this cigar bar. Two-story commercial type building. Okay. Good old cigar bar. Uh, a chance to fire there if possible. What's that? Central store. Well, it's 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 located in the one I just showed around the corner. Oh, okay, because I the pizza place. The pizza place. I love that pizza I place. Know. That New York pizza place. I think it's overrated. No, it's good. No, it's it's good. the right price. It's, it's good. big too. Wait, it's it's like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like that. You just have to wait too. Uh, but I just walked really fast to the smoke, so I never noticed the. the I don't think I don't think that one is has two stories, but I think the building's around it. Okay. So there's a lot of renovation that's taking place. Okay. And uh, I think there are apartment buildings above it. Above it? Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I think around the corner I saw there's like a little stairway that says like apartments. Oh. So there's probably like a full second floor. Okay. It's it's pretty cool down there, all those old buildings. Yeah. Really. That's what makes it so fun to go down there. Uh, here's a sidebar. Did you know that tobacco industry landed in Fort Myers because they used to they used to do a lot of tobacco work up from from Cuba all the way up to Tampa, mm -hmm. the Yarbor district. It was just interesting when I was rolling around here to see that they had had all these interesting cigar shops here, and I didn't think that was real, but it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. They're all happy there. Okay, back to our story. <laughs> okay, but this is where you get happy because you'll go to the the cigar bar you'll think about this as you, as you go inside these old buildings and you start saying well what's upstairs and how do they save the people who are sleeping from these guys smoking cigars and then suddenly something catches fire what happens high three construction is also normally in in modern times is normally used for larger sometimes multi-story commercial or multi-family structures and it's been used for one and two family buildings. So we're seeing a lot of this kind of construction happening around the area. And then multiple residences with those, those heavy wood, uh, heavy wood facades on the outside holding up that frame. You know, it's rarely protected by a sprinkler system. Next time I go to the cigar bar, I'll look for a sprinkler, sprinkler system or to, to the pizza joint. Yeah. Is there a pizza? Probably not, because you could escape there pretty quickly. Oh, I think they're going to get to the Well, look, we'll go look. They would have to, right? I think if, so. If you're <clears throat> a restaurant, I'll have to look it up in code. That's what I'll look it up in yeah. code. It's rarely protected by a sprinkler system, and many have been remodeled and altered. The roof often similar to the floor construction and hazards reduced by using fire stops. So we saw last week McDonald's caught fire because they put a new roof over an old roof and oh. it was a, a space and things can happen. And that's what happens in remodeling. Sometimes you don't do things by code or you do something by code, but there's a way around it and you have these areas that can catch fire. Unstable under fire conditions and highly damaged old buildings. Primary fire hazard is fire and smoke spread to concealed spaces. Okay, we're halfway through that. I need to check in my people here uh, to see if they're still paying attention. There they are. Okay. Burger King recently caught fire nearby, too. Burger King caught oh, fire. Yes. Where was it? Burger King here in town? More okay. information. Yes. Diana, Diana is saying, which one? Which Burger King? The building. Is that Another footage? Burger King, the one on Colonia, the one next to... Immokalee. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, where? Where to catch fire? I don't know if it's on fire, but they're just rebuilding from ground zero. The, the one next to Chick fil A and Colonia. They like turn over. That's because they're, they're making it like no water. Yeah, but I didn't. Yeah, I never. I, that's yeah, right, I didn't hear the, anything catching on fire on here. No, that, that's not that one. It's the one. No, right? Okay. Okay, well, we'll go with search it. We'll go with, Okay, what else? Bird King caught fire. I'm here, Maria. Good luck stocking developers with bottomless bank accounts from 15 to 80 feet. That's a lot of height in building. Uh, I'm not getting any response about Chick-fil-A. No, no 
Chick-fil-A, Feeds, okay. okay, but Burger King, you know, Burger King is going to do great business because people can't afford Chick-fil-A. And so the, the theory is that during a recession, smaller smaller things, a lower price, your Taco Bells and stuff, I take off. Because things are tight now, and people are still, you still see the lines going crazy. You can still get the $5 Burger King meal. You can leave here for a $5 Burger King and yeah. it's drinking fries. You can't get nothing at Chick-fil-A for less than $9. No, you can't get anything at Chick-fil-A, so why the draw, why the crowds? Right? Is it that good? Do you good. have that it's kind of money? No. Same with Starbucks. I mean, it's, it's Starbucks good, but I don't good. think it's a good Starbucks, $9, $7 drink. Um, that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's good, but I wouldn't sit there four hours. Right. Wait, you burn six hours. What if uh, you burn the gas? I mean, I like, like, yeah. you know, you, you, you literally wait there like three minutes and it I just see her head, so I don't know, but I okay, just see no, cars like, uh, lined up and like. Would home. you go and would you start park your car and go inside if that were the only option? If yeah. you had to order inside, yeah. okay, and you would. But you, you would have to leave your car. I mean, you would probably do that for something you like, right? What do you like? I don't remember. Yeah, I would. If I, I, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, as long as it's ready. <laughs> but but it's a different experience. Because you're hungry. You yeah, you're hungry. hungry. Yeah, what's that that place up there by the wall? It's uh, Sonic Burger. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Sonic. I've never it's been to Sonic. Sonic. Uh, Sonic. It's got a good, but they got play with bacon. They throw bacon at you. They're like, oh, this is good. But they <laughs> delicious. The next time you're like, oh, I can't believe I ate that. What about checkers? I like checkers. That's like checkers. What about this steak and shake? Steak and shake. Oh, Does everyone go to steak, shake, and steak? They suck. Yeah, there's a yeah, panel like, back. <laughs> okay, we got some. They're cheap, but they're, yeah. It's I like... can't publish what they're saying about the steak and shake. Okay, I gotta go back. All right. The one the one in front of Sam's Club, that one's pretty good. The one over there Colonial. Colonial is no good. What about Wawa? But they don't serve anything. Yeah, yeah they, they actually hold the whole thing up. One in ten, how you rate the Wawa? They have rice and beans, though. They have rice and beans and Wawa. I'm in. I'm in. They have burrito and everything. Well, well my, my great downfall is Taco Bell. Just like 10 o'clock, you just get hungry and you're like, you can't fight it. Yeah. You're like, I'll just really get the little one to get home, but then you wait in line and you're like, oh, give me the big one. You know? <laughs> Yeah, Taco Bell is good, but like no, it does things to you. It sucks at night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does things. It still wants to do the things you can't score. You get frustrated. You get strange sounds from the song. That's all. I'm an, I'm done. Type three on here. So, so we, we got here by saying that, that these kind of situations, stable under fire conditions, are highly damaged buildings. Primarily fire hazard, smoke, and, sp and smoke spread through concealed space. All right, so let's take a look. Also, there's a great preponderance of commercial and residential. Is that here? That's not here. There's no people. Here yeah, it is. That is here. This, the Starbucks, is right here that they're renovating. He's no longer here. He does like a lobster. Roll, walking, lobster rolls. Oh, they moved it? Are they shut down? The Starbucks? Starbucks no, shut down. This is this, this because of the hurricane. I think that Starbucks, this guy shut down. The sub guy didn't make it. The, the lobster guy made it. Because of the hurricane? Hmm? Because of the hurricane? No, they went out of business, right? They went out of business. It's yeah. hard to make a living here, but Ford's is Doc Ford, or no, it's not Doc Ford. Ford is Ford's garage. Ford's Ford's garage. Ford's garage. Ford's Ford's garage. Ford's garage. That place sucks. Why? I don't like food. You like beer? Yeah, but the beer I mean, going to? Beer is not something that, I mean, you can get beer anywhere, but I'm talking about yeah, like, they food there. Yeah, they have beer. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's, <coughs> it's a team, isn't it? Well, yeah. Or it wants to be. Well, it's they it. have, it's different, it's like a family owned, but they own like different, like they own the Firestone, they own uh -huh. the Lodge, uh, the Oyster <coughs> one. It's all owned by like this family. Are we talking Doc Fords or, or Ford's garage. Henry Ford's garage? Yeah. Is that a Doc Ford? No. no. Doc Ford is good. Okay. What is Doc Ford? Doc Ford. What seafood? It's seafood. Oh. Okay. Carrying on. <laughs> okay. Type three buildings have been constructed in two distinct types, and so older 
this is the early 19th, 20th century. We don't have a lot of that stuff. <clears throat> but older buildings have, this is your historical. Older buildings have tongue and groove floorboards, solid lumber joists, rafters. They can be three, three inches by 10 inches. Columns can be added for additional support. And room size is limited by the span of supporting elements. So whenever you see like the fire movies, the, the backflash and a lot of that, a lot of the early stuff, these early buildings make for good movies, uh, but also disasters because w what happens is as these things are burning, different conditions happen within the wall. And look at this guy, he's just standing there. Okay, floor joists have a fire cut to keep <coughs> floor joists from pushing the wall down. You remember this in building codes, no, in building uh, blueprints, it has that little curve cut to allow it, it's pre-assembled so when it does burn and start to rotate and falling down, it has a place to go. This one becomes like a pry bar to, to crack the, the, the wall for the poor fireman. Square cut and fire cut is what we are looking for. So the fire department spends a great deal of time learning about architecture, believe it or not. They, they learn a lot about architecture almost more than we do. As far as like on the ground, how do you, how do you fight that architecture? One inch to one and a half inch wooden planks are commonly used in the roof assembly. Newer buildings may consist of plywood or strand board Laminate veneer lumber and parallel strand lumber, which we're learning in materials this week as well. Uh, supported by lightweight wooden trusses and wooden beams. Can we see some of the new stuff? Okay, we'll try. Okay. New and old, but lofts. Lofts are big because they, they provide a larger height space in each room. We got a higher price tab. But you can run your businesses below, <clears throat> and you can also have some kind of dual box attached to it. Uh, so that's more modern. You have this in Cape Coral. No, they're start, starting There's, the project. Yes, I think downtown Fort Morris, Cape Coral have, have some stuff that looks old too. There's that old trend. And then you have this composition of different elements. Here's a common looking kind of thing. Let's look at it. Okay. The modern stuff that's coming at us is going to be something like this. Uh, and you can start to see the <coughs> it all. So you have the, the businesses on the ground floor, the hairdresser, the coffee shop, and then you have the living spaces. The question is, only certain types of people like to live above restaurants and stuff. Only someone who likes to have a lot of action. Or like that one on the most part? Um, Governor Boy, I think. Yeah. With these buildings, the, the codes hasn't quite caught up to. And one of those things is like, how do you, you're fitting solar arrays and HVAC units onto the roof. New conditions are starting to happen. But then you also have this old build, these older buildings that people are putting this stuff on, which causes a greater um, dead, dead load on the building. So there's a lot of un, unusual things happening. Now we're starting to look at things from a fire person's perspective. How is it related to type 3 construction? Are these walls going to be stable when they catch fire? Is the interior column girder and beam going to be stable when they catch fire? Uh, where are the void spaces? <coughs> and then there's that excessive fire loads. If you have a solar array that wasn't calculated in, or somebody sized in your HVAC a lot heavier, and when things are burning, it's going to come down faster. There's also truss roofs that can cause problems and alterations. That's why the, the leading building inspection will really focus when they're doing remodeling on how things are affecting <coughs> other parts. I'll throw this in because we may have to draw this at some point. But this is how fire rating, how, how you increase your fire rating of the bare parts. 
you're going to coat, this is a column, and you're going to coat it with foam. Fire resistant materials. You can coat it, you can seal it in concrete. These are solutions on how you dance your code. You can encase it in a structural tube, or you can have column covers to be a fire resistant material. Okay, so some people like just the bare naked beauty of the column. And, and this is another right? The designer might like that and might want, want to have that, but you can't always get that. You can spray it with fire resistant a thin layer to keep that structural look. If you ever go around Old Town, look for these things that are attached that are on walls. So our shaped anchor plates were located on the west side of the theater building that was adjacent to the fire building. The anchor plates appear to have been attached to the ends of heavy timber roof trusses, supporting the roof and also some of the second floor joists. The photo shows the star-shaped anchor plates located in the D side wall of the area that collapsed. You see a lot of these in Tennessee when you go down, you go down or you go to Nashville on your walking tour uh, through the Jack Daniels distillery. You see these things. Okay, and then, and then there's also larger spans that were done with heavy timber trusses. Right? You see the interior structure. <coughs> I'm going to talk now about heavy timber, which is a type four. So we're switching over to type four. And this is a, a great style that's, that's coming back into style, and it creates open spaces. Like you can't hide things with heavy timber. Things are always going to be, so here you can see the electricity pipes, you can see the HVAC coming through, lamps, everything is kind of exposed. But that's the beauty of it, is you get a large span, and your fire rating substantially goes down because you see what you get and everyone can, can get out fast enough. Uh, let's see what I have for them. Okay, just an article on that. We like heavy timber, the characteristics that heavy timber construction is the oldest types of buildings used in this country. And it, it also goes back almost to, I mean, more medieval when you think of this, or early times. Heavy timbers construct is one of the oldest types of buildings used in this country. These buildings were originally designed and used as multi-story industrial or storage office. You see a lot of value in old lofts, like if you go up north, people love to live in old factories. They love to live into uh, old department stores for this very reason. You get that, you get to actually see the wood, see your structure. Fire resistance is obtained by placing limitations on the size of the wood, structural members, and minimum thickness and composition of wood. Type 4 heavy timber will have four bearing exterior walls. Construction includes columns not less than 8 inches thick in any dimension. Beams and girders not less than 6 inches by 10 inches. Roof frame is not less than 6 inches by 8 inches. So it's big, thick. Floors and roofs have thicker than normal construction consisting of bearing layers and materials that will build up to a deck. 3 inches thick to 4 inches. Arches and trusses not less than eight inches thick in any direction. They come with a lot of fasteners. You can see the joints on them. The lumber may be sawn, but now it can be laminated. We can make large spans of wood using lamination techniques that's done in a, in a manufacturing facility. The lumber is usually found in old mills, factories, warehouses, and older churches. It's also recycled. People who find old buildings might buy the old buildings to get the parts. And these old timbers go for a lot of money. The exterior walls are non combustible. Interior structures made of wood or laminated wood have, with no concealed spaces. We saw that old area. You can't really make walls for it. It does not have plaster walls and ceilings covering the interior framework. So there's not stuff that's going to catch fire that's not visible. Wood has large dimensions, much heavier and more difficult to ignite, ignite, and withstand fire for a longer time frame. So you can 
You can torch it, it's just going to take it, it's going to char. The primary fire hazard, combustible contents of structural members does not fail early in a fire. Because of a massive amount of combustible materials, there will be a serious heat given off and may pose exposure protection problems. So here, here's a big one. This is highly desirable. Maybe this is in Toledo, Ohio. Different kinds of buildings that are repurposed and become icons. After the lots of Denver, they retrofit everything. You have heavy timber columns, beams, and girders. Get that nice open span. The masonry walls holding it all together as well. And then large open spaces and the lack of hidden voids. Also, you can do you can do some architectural um, extravagance using those lattice pieces to make something here. It's being used to cover a pool. Okay, we're on 51 and 57. This is awesome. Looking through the fire codes lens, fire hazards rated to type three and four construction. Heavy fire loading, combustible finishes, furnishes and finishing. The wood floor, ceilings and coverings, large open spaces and unprotected openings. And remember our ladder from the fire department kind of dictates how far the structures how high we can go because they have to get to it by the fire from our creations. The hazards are combustible furnishings and finishes. The most important thing to remember in, in fire is that it's not just the fire that, that kills, it's the fire spread and the smoke production. Smoke is more deadly. Wooden floors and ceilings contribute to fire loading and prolonged exposure may result in collapse. Large open spaces contributes to the spread of warehouses, churches, large atriums, common attics, and theaters. And unprotected openings, floor openings for stairwells, freight elevators, and conveyor devices. Summary size up. Read a building to identify factors, the class of building construction, how it's, it's resistant to fire, heat, and critical structural members. Renovations that may have created void areas and movement of heat, smoke, and fire within the building. <clears throat> the building inspections should include areas around utility service should be inspected as areas where fire can spread. Many older buildings have new plumbing and electrical systems installed. Knowledge of potential building concerns can be obtained by performing inspections during new construction or in existing buildings. And lastly, information you may be available through your local fire inspector or building department. Okay, we reached it. And, and perhaps you went to the Edison Mall or you've done a virtual Edison Mall tour to see some of the things. I did get some feedback, but we'll discuss that next week. Uh, but